Well, I'm going to guess that with Nick, since it's his list, he's ranked just right for Nick Wright. But... For me, <laughs> no, he's ranked too low. There's only three players that I would indisputably put ahead of him on any very subjective top 5, 50, 100, 3,000 list. And that's Michael Jordan, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Bill Russell. So wherever you want to put anybody else, Fourth. Kobe Bryant would be... Wow in my top five. But I really don't understand why we're starting with me and Kobe Bryant since we're talking about Nick's, Nick Wright's list. I just... Uh, well, because I... Not. But... Because of what you just I'm said. Here. I'm here to participate. I'm going to... Yeah, go ahead. I mean, well, the reason yeah. we're starting with you is because if we started no. with me, it'd be like, yes, because I agree with the list that I put together. Uh, okay. So I... So right. the real... Listen, right. I, Kobe is six and it's the, it's the last 50 years, so Russell's ineligible. So the five guys who are left on the list, you know, and I won't reveal the order, are obviously Kareem, Michael, LeBron, Magic, and Duncan. Those are the five guys who are ahead of him on the list. I am, mm. I don't think it is worth mm. spending time, at least a lot of time, on the fact that Rick Buecher just said he has Kobe Bryant ahead of LeBron James on his all-time list. Because it is just such an indefensible hmm. point. Like, the thing Kobe did the best was score, and LeBron scores more. The thing Kobe hmm. theoretically is better than LeBron at is shooting, except LeBron has a better efficiency. Oh, Nick, that's on layups, except he also shoots a better three-point percentage. The thing Kobe did the best was clutch shots, except LeBron has hmm. five playoff buzzer beaters, and Kobe hmm. has one. And that disregards the fact Please that everything else to do with LeBron basketball, more clutch than LeBron Kobe. was better at it. I mean... Okay, well, le well I mean, mm. again, so, Wilds, mm. you can shake your head at it because, again, you've been brainwashed by it. Kobe has won. We've seen it on a loop for a hunt for 20 years. Kobe's one career playoff buzzer beater where he then <laughs> pantomimed the Michael mm. celebration. LeBron's got five of them. But I don't even want to debate Kobe versus LeBron because mm. I don't think it's interesting. The Kobe versus Duncan thing, I think, is interesting. Because I think there's a real argument there. And I have Duncan ahead of him. Mm. And I'm very, I'm, I'm surprised that two mm. guys who played in the same era and that Duncan, with a higher degree of difficulty, had never had a down year. 50 wins every single year of his career. The playoffs every single year of his career. The only year, year he didn't win 50 was when the season was 50 and he won the title that year. That, that you would argue yeah. that Kobe is ahead of Duncan. Like the LeBron thing, it's just, he, he, listen, we all have our blind yeah. spots. That's fine. But ha, our, Kobe ahead of no, Duncan is interesting no, to me. No, and I'm not. curious why. No, I oh, Okay, sure. Then no problem. Uh, but I'm curious why you think I'll Kobe lump, is ahead of Duncan. I'll lump all this Duncan. together. I'll lump all this together for you. Sure. I'll answer, I'll answer both of those. First of all, I, I, the, the, there is the difficulty of when you're talking about different eras to make comparisons. The competition was different. The game was different, et cetera, et cetera. So we always reduce these things to numbers. Even if we take accolades, we reduce it to numbers, three MVPs versus two MVPs, whatever it might be. And that looks nice, but it's not reality. The val the, the, what I have is the benefit that I have is that I saw Tim Duncan, Kobe Bryant, and LeBron James all play their entire careers. And so it's not a matter of me having to measure yeah, numbers or accolades did. or all of that, because I'm conscious of all of the variables that are involved. But you don't want to get into LeBron. We'll put that aside because we're never going to solve that between the two of us. When it comes to Duncan and Kobe, it's simply this. It's that, yes, you're the Duncan never had a down year. OK, but he was also with a franchise that didn't have down years because of the way they're run because and the of way him. they're coached and they had the same coach. Kobe didn't have that Kobe didn't have that experience. Like he didn't have that that nucleus. It there were a lot of changes made in terms of coaching and personnel over the course of his career. I simply look at the accomplishment of winning three in a row and then two in a row and how difficult that is physically and mentally. And that's one of the, the, the downsides of when I look at Duncan and the Spurs is that they never won back-to-back -back championships. They never dominated beyond one season. 
And knowing the toll that that takes, the challenge that that is, that, uh, that stands as a huge, huge accomplishment. And I also believe that Kobe is vastly devalued for his contribution and what he meant to the first uh, three-peat team with the, with, with the Lakers. Kobe was as much the closer as Shaq was the starter on that team. And whether it was in the finals or whether it was during the regular season, Kobe was as important to those championships as Shaquille O'Neal was. And I feel like as if as, as we move on, it has become he was definitely the second banana and he was riding Shaq's coattails. And I will never, I will never give in to the idea of that. All right, uh, Rick, I, I do agree with Nick's list. Uh, I think Kobe is, Kobe is aptly rated at sixth. Um, in addition to LeBron ahead of him, Duncan ahead of him, I got Magic ahead of him. I'm surprised you, you had Kobe ahead of Magic. I think Magic is clearly the greatest Laker. Magic made nine finals in 12 seasons with the Lakers, you know, before he retired and, you know, came back later for a bit. Um, he carried to a large degree, an older Kareem Abdul-Jabbar for the second part of the Showtime dynasty. Um, he made his teammates better. Everyone could shine. Uh, Kareem could be his maximum self. James Worthy could be his maximum self. Byron Scott, yeah. when they play with Magic. And we've seen, rarely have we seen superstars, particularly in this era, be able to do that. Um, so I would have Magic ahead of him. Uh, Duncan, uh, look, you made some great points because that is the not Duncan they never repeated. But Duncan didn't have the supreme talent, particularly with Shaq, that Kobe had. David Robinson was kind of, of on the tail end for their first couple championships. Then Manu and Tony Parker are great, but they're not the supreme top talent that players. Kobe had when he won back to back championships. Hold on. Hold on. Well, he, first let, of all, let, he, let won, he won three. He the made first Gasol three a better Shaq. player. He made Lamar you know, Odom and, a better and, player. And to say, to say Shaq wasn't the number right. one guy is revisionist history. Now, I'm not going to diminish Kobe. I'm with you on that. Let's not diminish Kobe and say he was riding Shaq's coattails. But to say it was even, as you kind of implied, okay. that's an overstatement. It's it insane. was Shaq as the it's hub. I said, and, and the other thing about, as, here's the thing about, Kobe, that's a, that's a, I have a real issue with Kobe's. I mean, like I said, I got him six, so I got him high, but Kobe was not efficient, Rick. And that is a huge, he shot 44% for his career. He never shot 47% for a season. And that's playing eight years with Shaq, drawing double and triple teams in his prime. So that is one of the major things that has, to me, a LeBron and a Duncan, I know Duncan's a big guy, but a LeBron in particular ahead of Kobe is that he was far more efficient, which makes it easier for your teammates to play around you. There's, all right, there's a few things I want to say off top because I do want to drill into the Duncan thing. The, the LeBron part is a, a, just objectively speaking an insane opinion to hold. The magic part, I didn't even think about it, is an equally it's, insane opinion to hold. Magic Johnson played 12 seasons in this league pre-HIV. Nine of those seasons he went to the finals, and nine of those seasons he either won MVP of the league or finished second or third. Now, if we want to say Magic didn't play long enough, so be it. Now, I have Kobe ranked ahead of Shaquille O'Neal because of the longevity of it, that second, th the back-to-back, -back, all that's fair. Like all, and what he accomplished in his career. In those three championship runs, those three NBA finals, they didn't need a closer because the games were not close and the series were not close because Shaquille O'Neal across those three NBA finals averaged 36, 15, 4, and 3 on 60%. And after the first finals that went six, we they the numbers, never man. had a team. That, what, what, bro, or, or Rick, you, the numbers, here's the thing. As long as in sports you keep a score, the numbers are going to tell part of the story. As long as it's not figure skating and it's just like we're going to watch them play mm. and then, you know, you, you draw, you judge it. As long as it's like how many points <laughs> do you score, then how many points someone scores does tell part of the story. 
But I want to talk about Duncan for a second. Stay here with me on Duncan, not Kobe versus Shaq. Because David Robinson was amazing in 99 when they won their first title. In 03, David Robinson averaged eight points per game. Right. In 05 and 07, just like you said with Kobe, not another top 75 player for his two rings in 9 and 10. Duncan did not have a top 75 player in 05 mm-hmm. and 07. The championship they run in 2014, David or Tim Duncan was a year removed from being first team, first team all NBA. And this idea of, well, he had Greg Popovich. Kobe had Phil Jackson. Well, Duncan had, uh, had Manu and Tim for a good part of it. Kobe had Shaquille O'Neal. Mm-hmm. Like, the, the idea, and why did Kobe have to go through a brief portion of his career without Phil Jackson? Well, ask Phil Jackson, who wrote in his book that Kobe was one of the reasons he left, couldn't deal with it anymore. Now, again, I have him six in the last 50 years. I have massive respect for what he accomplished. But the consistency of Duncan, not to mention, and I should have said this earlier, 15 all NBA, all defensive teams, and I would argue the second best defensive player of the last 50 years behind only Dream. Like, I, I the he accomplished everything Kobe did just a little bit more and on, under a little bit tougher circumstances. Yeah, well, look, Phil may have left or decided to leave because of Kobe. I wouldn't buy everything that uh, that Phil said in that book. But he also came back because of Kobe, because he saw the opportunity sure. to win with Kobe Bryant. So yeah. where their personal relationship is and the difference in that between Popovich and Tim Duncan's relationship, now we're getting off the board into very, very intangible elements. I'm simply going to tell well, you, you that don't want I the numbers three, or the intangibles. Three. Kobe, what Tim are we Duncan, allowed to use? And Shaq, we can't use stats I saw or them intangibles. All play, yeah. and if I step back, I saw them. I saw them all play. And if you ask me, who would I take to start my team? Who do I think was the best player based on seeing them play in all sorts of situations wow. up close, not on TV, up close? I'm taking Kobe Bryant. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.